Hi there, my name is Wonia Thibault from Buckskin Revolution, and I want to talk a little bit about quality buckskin thong making. And for starters, I hope that you're not watching this video in order to learn how to make buckskin underwear. That is not what I mean by thong. So, the original meaning for the word thong was a thin strip of leather. So buckskin thong is a thin strip of leather that we use for sewing together hides into clothing. Now, when I was a kid, we called the things that you call flip-flops today thongs, right? Why is that? Because they had a thin strip, originally leather, now largely synthetic, but that went between your toes. So nowadays, the thing that we tend to think of when we hear the word thong is again a garment that has a thin strip of something threaded between other things, right? So same root, a thin strip of leather, different meanings applied throughout time. So I'm starting a movement to take back the use of the word thong as sewing material for sewing with buckskin. So this video is going to be all about buckskin thong. I hope you can hang with me and keep your minds out of the gutter. Let's talk about thong cutting because there's a lot of misinformation about thong cutting out there. You see a lot of the old like scout craft books and such talk about cutting thong from a circle and you go spiral around and around the circle. And then a lot of people are like, yeah, but I don't really like sewing with thong because it's always breaking on me. So remember when we were talking about the nature of hides and how they're all of these loose fibers kind of going every which way? And the thing is when you cut in a circle, then you've got all of those fibers to the outside of the circle, just kind of loose and sloppy, and all of the fibers to the inside curve of the circle, totally taut, right? Pulled under total tension. So that does two things. One is it means that your thong is only as strong as those hides that are totally under tension, and the rest of the fibers aren't doing their job. They're not taking any of the weight of the, the tension on your seam. The other thing is that we talked about how you want to keep your thong flat in a seam. Well, if you've cut it in a spiral, then it's always wanting to twist on you. And it's a lot harder work to keep it, to keep it flat in the seam. You're kind of fighting its nature. It's really hard, however, to find, you know, totally flat pieces. So it's okay to have some curves in the pieces that you're cutting your thong from. What you want to avoid is really tight curves. And you want to avoid having it all curves all the same direction. So if it curves, you know, in a couple different directions, that works okay because then you don't have one whole side that's constantly under tension and one whole side that's constantly loose, right? So when I'm preparing a piece for thong, so one thing is that I don't want to use really thick hide for cutting thong. So that's another misnomer. A lot of people think for the strongest thong, you want the strongest, thickest, toughest hide, right? Well, it's not actually true because what we want is thin thong so that we can go through our small holes and our short stitch length, right? So if you're, using, if you're using really thick hide, then you have to cut it super, super narrow, and then you end up with mostly cross-section and just a little bit of the grain surface, and the hide is really weak in cross-section. The highest concentration of those protein fibers is gonna be right at the grain surface. So that's the strongest part of the thong. So if I, if I can, I like to cut from medium thick hide, so not right in the belly and not in the thick parts of the hide. But if I, have, if I don't have the ideal thickness, then I would rather have thin hide than really thick hide. And because thin hide stretches a lot, I'm gonna be cutting it wider and then it's gonna get a lot longer as it stretches, but I'm gonna have a lot more of that top surface of the hide. Right? So I'm going to have a, a high percentage of that strong part of the hide if I'm using thin hide for the thong. Does that make sense? Absolutely. So the other thing is that because, like we talked about, deer hide has so much variation within one hide, you're not going to have a really long stretch of hide that's all uniform thickness. So what you need to do is vary the width of your thong as you go through varying thicknesses of hide. So if you're cutting from the thinner parts of the hide, you're gonna cut your thong a little bit wider. And then as you get into the thicker parts of the hide, you're gonna cut it narrower. So this is why you don't wanna use like the commercial thong cutters, which are a device that basically cuts uniform thickness because those are made for like bark tans or chrome tans that are already gonna be uniform, right? They're put through a machine that shaves them down to uniform thickness. 
So they, those don't work with buckskin because you actually need to vary your width as you're cutting it according to how thick your hide is. So the technique is I'm gonna look for scraps and usually these end up being the outer parts of the hide because I'm lining the my pattern pieces up with my spine, right? So that means that usually it ends up being those edges of the hide that I have left over and that's what I'm gonna be cutting my thong from. So I'm gonna be taking those pieces and anywhere where there's sharp curves, I'm just gonna take my scissors and round those out. So like here, I would just nip that off to make it a nice shallow curve instead of a tight curve. And then I wanna hold my hide piece under tension while I'm cutting the thong. So in it's, if it's just loose and floppy, it's really hard to see what I'm doing and it's a lot harder to cut, right? Anything that's a little bit tauter is gonna be easier to cut. So what I do is I pinch the hide between my thumb and my third finger down here. So the thong that I'm cutting, I'm holding with my thumb and my ring finger, and then I'm holding the rest of the hide with my pointy and middle finger, right? So my first two fingers are supporting the bulk of the hide, and my thumb and my ring finger are supporting that piece I've already cut. And then I'm not bringing the tips of my scissors together. I'm just kind of sliding the crotch of my scissors up as I go with the whole thing under tension. Because if I bring the tips together, I'm likely to end up with little jaggedy edges and those are gonna be like little knots when I'm trying to pull the thong through. So sliding up as I go and keeping the thickness pretty uniform unless I'm getting to a thin part of the hide or a thick part of the hide and then I'm gonna vary the width of it. And then again, I'm going to cut, you know, I'm going to think about the, the seam I'm going to be sewing and make it long enough, ideally, to not have to splice. But if it's a really long seam, then I'm just going to plan on splicing. Like, the, like a leg seam, it's always going to be spliced. Or a dress or something that's long, I'm not going to worry about making a long piece of thong because it's just going to be a waste of not my time to pull all of that long length of thong through. Way better for materials and more time efficient to just splice yeah. instead. And then often I'll go back and sometimes there's going to be little thin areas where the hide was a little thinner than you realized and so you need to kind of fancy it up afterwards to get it more uniform. And then I'm usually always leaving a wider end for the butt and a narrow part for the tip, right? So I'm gonna try to set it up. If I have a thicker area on one end, I'm gonna use that for the butt. And if I have thinner hide, I'm gonna put my, my tip there so that it makes the nice taper. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so the final thing is just perfecting my tip. And again, I'm trying to, to uh, replicate the taper of my awl with the taper of my thong so that it's gonna fit into that nice awl hole very easily. Thoughts or questions about thong cutting? That was good. And then finally, pre-stretching my thong. There was the vein mark. Pre-stretching my thong before I start sewing with it, so I'm revealing any weak spots before it becomes part of my finished garment. So this one broke, so I'm just going to put a better narrow taper onto it. So that is how to make the highest quality sewing thong according to Wonia. So thanks so much for joining me and I encourage you to keep after it. It actually can take a little bit of practice to make good quality sewing thong. So if yours is a little uneven or has some jagged edges, don't be discouraged, just keep after it and it's not long before your hands just automatically start doing it right without having to think about it. And the truth is that if you're doing a lot of buckskin sewing, you're gonna get really motivated to make good quality thong because it makes such a difference in how much fun it is to sew with buckskin. And we want it to be really fun to sew with buckskin. So good luck and get after some great thong making.